AI was developed by humans and was developed for humans. And so it's up to all of us as businesses and as users of AI to make sure that AI serves us. AlphaGo has been one of the brightest minds in the world. Amazing job, everyone. This is an entirely new era. Herzlich willkommen, Sena und Philipp. Hey, welcome. Hello. Okay. Welcome, welcome. Hey, how are you? Very good. Have you, have you been in Hamburg before? Is this your first visit? No, first huh? time. First time, how do you like it so far? I love it. Yeah? You have a, we have a great city guide, uh, so Philip can show you all yes. the, <laughs> the hidden and the interesting places. Yeah? And now we are really interested to see and to hear what you prepared. Yeah? Super. Sarah and Philip, bitte schön. Thank you so much, Kai. Yeah? Hey, ich hello, everybody. Erst mal rüber, ich, ne? Wie hello, online marketing rock stars. How are you all doing? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. That's good to hear. So the first time, we tried to teach a computer to play the game of Breakout. In 2013, the computer lost completely. Well, that's probably not a surprise, because most of us would probably have failed as well if somebody had told us to play a game of Breakout without ever explaining to us any of the rules. The system had to learn everything from scratch. The only thing it understood was that at the end of a game, it got a score, and that score was either good or bad. So after 100 games, the system basically didn't know how to hit the ball. But after 200 games, it kind of figured out that the bat should go towards the ball. After 400 games, the system was as good as any human player that we have seen. And then after 600 games, something really interesting happened, because the algorithm developed a new strategy that we hadn't seen it before. And basically, that was to build a little tunnel at the side of the wall and have the wall go to the top and then bounce out all the little uh, wall items. And so we hadn't seen that coming, and the AI developed that creativity on its own. When you develop AI algorithms, games are your friend, because games are actually relatively easy to design in terms of the rules. And so the more complex the game, the more you can actually learn about the AI algorithm. That's why in March 2016, we went to the next stage. And after breakout, we developed an algorithm for the game of Go. AlphaGo, in 2016, shot to global fame pretty much overnight, because it defeated the world's reigning Go champion, Lee Sedol, in a game that was watched by 200 million people worldwide. And why is that a big deal? Because Go is actually an incredibly complex game that you couldn't solve with the old computing algorithms. It was long considered to be the holy grail of AI. Now, AlphaGo was developed by DeepMind. That's Google's AI unit. And of course, our colleagues at DeepMind didn't want to stay only at board games. For them, it's all about impact, human impact. How can you use AI to have positive impact on humanity? So the next topic that they tackled is actually one of the big grand challenges in biology, and that is to figure out the shape of proteins. And in biology, that's a big deal, 
you may know the sequence of a protein, but you don't necessarily know the shape. And if you don't know the shape, you don't actually understand how the protein works. So they came up with AlphaFold. And that is an AI model that can do exactly that, predict the shape of a protein from understanding the sequence of the amino acids. Is that a big deal, yes or no? Well, it turns out to do that for one protein takes a one researcher a couple of years. Oftentimes, that's PhD students working in a lab trying to figure out what a protein actually looks like. And so in one go, AlphaFold created the 3D structure of 200 million proteins. That's all the proteins known by science today. And that is basically saving, well, hundreds of millions of years of research and PhD time. And then the team at AlphaGo at, um, at DeepMind did something I think that was remarkable, not just the research, but what they did next. And that is to basically open source the results. So they created a website to which you and any researcher can go. And if you want to understand what a protein looks like, you just search for that protein and you see its beautiful 3D shape. Over a million researchers have used that website for research purposes. So for example, to develop new drugs or new vaccines. So that's a big deal. And that's exactly what we mean when we say AI for everyone. That means making AI accessible and useful for everyone. Our CEO Sundar Pichai recently said that AI will impact everything. And we've heard that on this stage a couple of times today already. Every product, every company, literally every company around the world will change because of AI. And so just like electricity has changed the world since the Industrial Revolution, we believe that AI will do the same over the next 10, 20, 30 years. And that's exciting. So AI can bring positive, meaningful change. But it also means we have to get it right. We have to get it right as a society, and of course, we as a business, and probably you are in your business as well. So one thing we think is important when it comes to AI is to work in partnerships, not to do it alone. It means open sourcing results, but also finding ways how we can collaborate together on AI. So in a moment, my colleague Zina will tell you how we do that, how we work in partnerships and what kinds of products we can all create if we do it together. So please, because this is online marketing rock stars, give a rock star applause to Zina. Thank you, Philip. Hello, Hamburg. A lot of you here have heard a lot recently about AI. And that's a good thing. On the one hand, AI is revolutionary. On the other hand, AI is already with us for a while, helping us, helping every one of us, making things better and safer behind the scenes. If you use a smartphone or if you search the internet, you are working with AI. With AI, you can also use your camera to search. You can also search by just humming a tune. If you are using maps, the AI tool in maps tells you where the traffic is. And sometimes it helps you avoid the bottleneck. You may have noticed that in maps, you can get what we call an eco-friendly routing option so that you know how to go from A to B with less emissions. We are working with cities to reduce pollution from traffic. So let me tell you about Project Greenlight. Project Greenlight is a project that uh, Google Research Team does, and it's an AI tool that gives data and trends about what happens in the intersections with cars when there is a traffic light. So how they behave, how many stop, how many go. And the AI tool gets this data and shares the recommendation with the city's engineers. And the city's engineers then optimize the traffic lights to reduce the stop and go and to reduce emissions. So in the cities where we have Project Green Light, like Budapest, Manchester, or Haifa, we have seen 30% less stop and go at intersections and 10% less emissions. 
I'm <laughs> We're very excited to let you know that we are testing Project Greenlight right here in Hamburg. Another example of how we can use AI is in healthcare. AI can help millions of people. For example, those going for breast, uh, breast cancer screening. We are working with universities like the Imperial College in London or national health agencies like the NHS to develop and deploy a tool called Mammosense Priority. This is a tool that can be used during mammographies and that is very accurate. It allows to get more consistent results, more access to breast cancer screening, and faster results to patients. A third example, predicting floods. The old model we had didn't have AI or very little. And now we have, an AI mod we have an AI tool that helps us predict floods. Floods are actually one of the biggest causes of natural death, uh, of, of deaths from natural causes in the world. 250 million people are affected by floods every year. The AI tool allows to use satellite imagery, river data and weather data to warn people in case they are in danger. And the Google Floods Forecasting Initiative is working with 20 countries in Africa, in Latin America, and in Southeast Asia. AI is already in our lives, and it will impact us more and more. Philip? Thank you. I'm back on. Thank you. So hopefully you saw some interesting examples for what we can do together in partnerships with AI. Now, one of the big topics, of course, over the last months that I'm imagining all of you will have tried out and uh, that has been written a lot about is, of course, generative AI, AI that creates new things. And we have some tools for that at Google. We, of course, have a large language model, and we have an interface for that that's called BARD. So BARD basically allows you to collaborate with our large language models and ask questions and answers. You can ask it to write a blog post or to come up with a packing list. And maybe we should ask BARD about Philip Westermeyer. What do you think? Should we ask BARD something about Philip Westermeyer? Yes? Let's actually find out if Philip is a rock star. And Bard says, well, it's a matter of opinion. Uh, he is, of course, a successful entrepreneur and marketing expert. I think we should invite Bard to come to OMR next time around, that I'd actually see some of this in action, and the answer will be probably even a bit more conclusive than it is here. But that's large language models, and I would imagine that all of you have tried them out, and we're looking forward to the point in time when we can expand Bard to more countries and more languages. Now. This is, of course, a conference that all started in online marketing. It's online marketing rock stars, and probably most of you work in marketing. So let me tell you, AI is already deeply embedded in our marketing tools at Google. It helps you find customers more effectively on the targeting side. It helps you bid more effectively and buy your customer traffic uh, better. And it helps you to be more creative. So it can be a real competitive advantage. And on the creative side, it can help you to turn, let's say, design sketches into 3D rendered models instantly, just like that. And so that is the future of marketing powered by AI. Now, of course, the development of these generative AI models has also led to a lot of questions about ethics, about what are the limits of this, about control. And these are really important questions. So as a company, already in 2018, we worked on designing AI principles. We published a set of these principles basically as our commitments on how we would go about developing AI. They include things such as making sure that there's no bias in the data, that there's no bias in the algorithm or in the recommendations, 
that there's transparency on how the algorithm works, that there's accountability for the outcomes, that there's privacy built in. And I think this is incredibly important, not just for one company, but for us as an industry, to get to a sense of alignment on what the principles for AI use are. Because ultimately, we need to do both. We need to tap into the big and enormous opportunities of AI, and we also need to understand and manage and mitigate risks uh, and challenges. So there are three key things that you might take away from what we've just talked about. Let me go through three of them. The first one, AI is rapidly changing the world around us. The second, it's already being used in a wide variety of products and applications, in healthcare, in transportation, and service. And the third, as AI continues to develop, it is only going to have an even greater impact. So if you reflect on these three things, these were supposed to be the end of my speech. But I actually didn't write those three points. I gave Bard my entire speech and said, can you sum it up for me? Can you write a summary? What's your sense? How did Bard do on that? I would say my sense, it did a decent job of summarizing the speech, but something was still missing, and that is the role of all of us. It's the human element. It's the piece that we need to bring to AI. It's that collaboration piece. Because ultimately, I'm deeply convinced AI was developed by humans and was developed for humans. And so it's up to all of us as businesses and as users of AI to make sure that AI serves us as humans. And that, to us, means for everyone. So thank you very much for your attention, and it's always a pleasure to be here in Hamburg. Thank you. Sina Hartem und Philipp Justus, meine Damen und Herren. Vielen Dank. Thank you. Very interesting. Yeah. Thank you. So, what are the plans for the rest of the day? So, what are you going to show, Sina? Any dinner options? <laughs> well, recommendations? For sure, we're going to talk about a dinner here in Hamburg with online marketing rock stars. Mm -hmm. But we're also busily expecting tomorrow, because tomorrow is what we call Google I.O. It's a okay. big developer conference. And we, hopefully, as many of you, are excited to see what's coming up. Okay, let's go. How long are you going to stay in, uh, in Germany, in Europe? Unfortunately, I go back tonight, sorry. Wow, really? <laughs> Just in and out? I have three young children, so okay. going home. Um, <laughs> Since we talked a lot about children before. Googlers are always also... busy. So nice to have you here. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Yeah. Sena Hatte, meine Damen und Herren, Philipp Justus. Thank you. Vielen Thank Dank. You. Thank you. Alles Gute, all the best. Thank Safe you travels. Vielen Dank. Auf Wiedersehen. Yeah. Uh, so you, know, you, can, you can follow Philip this way. Thank you so much.